All right, welcome to the Wrestler's Grind Podcast, Episode 9. I'm your co-host, Hunter. And I'm your host, Adolfo. We finally got uh, that one right. We got uh, a big week coming up, obviously, big weekend. Um, we have UFC 300, and then we also had the Olympic trial, like, last chance qualifier. Um, Adolfo, what stuck out to you the most about the uh, last chance qualifier? Man, it had to be the high schoolers just beating some NCAA champions. Bo Bassett beating Anthony Ashnall, and then Jack Forrest beating NATO in the finals to qualify for the Olympic trials. Dude, what what's in the water these days with these high schoolers? I mean, I just feel like we haven't seen this many high schoolers do this well. Yeah, man, there's like like eight or nine of them already in the Olympic trials. It's It's crazy. Yeah, man, it's just really interesting. I mean, with all the resources they have these days, you know, they've got YouTube. There's these, like, great wrestling academies. Um, like you said, I mean, I guess the two biggest names, really, that did the best is Bo Bassett, Jax Forrest. Um, let's just jump right in. What did you think of Jax Forrest just putting it on uh, NATO? Yeah, NATO really didn't have anything to <laughs> say about uh, Jack Forrest, pretty much every position they got in, Jacks scored, so that was pretty, uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty like, I don't know, just mind blowing, like to me, just to see that, you know, a guy like Nato getting picked apart, just because he's been on the senior level for quite some time and has competed with the best of them, has beat some, you know, some of the best of them, so it was kind of really shocking. Like Ashnall, you know, he's not. Uh, really been a guy at 60 65 so it wasn't like it was so shocking to me but the nato loss to forest was because i've seen nato have some quality wins um Ashnall still um i just didn't see him being you know a top contender at 65 great wrestler but just 65 just being so deep right um but yeah it's, it's just, it was just shocking to see i think nato get wrecked by um Jax Forrest, and then, you know, Ashnall, he really didn't, he, I don't know, he looked gas. he didn't, he didn't look like he was really into it, into the match, just. It was pretty quick, too, like, it wasn't like this is at the end of the second period, where Bo Bassett, you know, starts putting the pace on, it was, it, it all happened kind of fast. Yeah, and the, it, yeah, in the beginning of the match, it just, you know, Bo Bassett got in on a takedown, and from distance, and I don't, I don't know what was going on there. I don't know if it's weight cuts, uh, maybe not competing in a long time. But, yeah, these high schoolers, they're the real deal, man. And, you know, it, it gets brought up every single time when one of them wins. How old are they? And uh, Jax Forrest, I saw he commented on uh, X saying that Bassett and him are 17. So I, I'm curious uh, if they'll – I think – I think Jax is a sophomore. I believe Bassett is too. But the question is if they'll like reclassify. Even then, though, man, it's like those guys are NCAA champions and out of college. You know, like they've got their man strength. And we kind of saw that happen when Bo wrestled uh, Matt Kowalczyk. You know, um, just kind of seemed like, you know, Kowalczyk just had that man strength and it was too much for Bo. But even then, to perform that well, if you would have told me this like 10 years ago, I mean, the only guys that we really saw like that were Pico, Aaron Pico, and then, um, you know, Chance Marsteller, got to be one of the best high school wrestlers ever. But even then, like, you know, he came into Oklahoma State his freshman year, and he didn't really, you know, do too great. And, like, Bo Bassett and Jax Force, like, these guys are just killing it. Um, what was the um, – Guy's name, he beat Max Dean. Uh, Marisola. Uh, there's two of them. I forget. I, I think Connor Mar Marisola is the one that beat Max Dean. Yeah, so it, it's interesting to see. I mean, these guys, I feel like, like one day we're going to see them, in my opinion. I mean, they got to end up becoming world champions or Olympic champions or at least making the teams, right? Yeah, I mean, they've already done it at the, you know – uh, cadet junior level. I mean, Bassett, world champion. Forrest. Um, I believe. Uh, I know he's what he's got a silver at world at junior worlds. I can't recall if he's won it. Um, but yeah, the, these guys are. 
just getting better and they're better at a younger age that you know they have access to some of the best wrestlers uh they have access to you know just training with the best of them like think about you know for the these kids bo bassett um jacks forrest mason gibson uh i forget uh what the other kid's name is his last name melvin um like he crazy freshman so they're they're all training together man like that i you, they're the best high schoolers in the country and they're all training together yeah and it's scary too especially once they hit their like man strength era you know i mean there's gonna be smashing everybody but speaking of man strength it's just surprising that like ashnall like he got a like I think he got a little, you know, uh, I don't know how, how to say it, but Bo Bassett, like, really put some, like, he had some strength. Like, he he really, like, you know, put him in the, you know, front front headlock position, got around him. It was, I don't know, it just, and, but then Kalazic, he, 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 Bassett couldn't do that to him. He, like. Yeah, but, yeah, Kalazic shot like a double and, um, and Bo couldn't get his hips back at all, you know, so. But even, like, Jax, so Jax against Nato, he didn't have that problem against Nato. I mean, that was crazy to see. And I feel like Nato's got to be one of the strongest guys at that weight. Got to oh. be. Oh, definitely, man. He's, look at, just full muscle. That's all he is, man. But interesting to see, you know, those guys did great. Obviously, they've got a bright future. What else stood out to you about the last chance qualifier? Um, Vincenzo made, uh, you know, won the bracket at 74. He's, uh, had to go to last chance. Yeah, I forget the last time he's competed, um, beforehand, but, and then, I think that was, you know, I think just, that was the talk of the weekend, mainly, just, uh, those guys, uh, you know, beating those NCAA champions. Now, you know, at 57, you have Luke Littadell who's in that bracket. You have Jax Forrest, and then you have, um, let me see who else is in this. Marcus Blaze is in the 57 kilo bracket. I'm, I'm curious if one of them, you know, I don't you know. Think, I'm you not, think they can get it done? One I one? don't, man, I don't want to, I would, whatever the odds are, I would take it just to take it because, you know, maybe make some money, but, I wouldn't. Ah, oh man, it's just tough to pick. Like, it. It would. Not that it would make sense, but it would just be so like, with the time right now of how good high school wrestlers are to see one of them make the team. It just feels like that. Sh it feels like it should be a thing. But then you look at who are the contenders at fifty seven: Thomas Gilman, Spencer Lee, Nick Soriano, Vito Arruja, and you're just like. Okay, there's like almost no way one of these kids are knocking off those guys. But then it's like, it's got to happen somehow, some way, right? Like if they were to do it, so they would have to do the unthinkable. And man, if, if you had to pick one of the guys, those three high schoolers to make the team, who are you picking? To I was about to ask you the exact same thing. Um, Man, I, I think... At this point, I don't know, man. Uh, maybe Jax Forrest or a uh, Little Doll. I don't know why. The, just those two specifically for me, I could see getting it done. But man, I don't know. Like Gilman, Vito, like you said, Suriano. I just don't. I, I just don't see them beating those guys. It's gonna be a tough task. I'm curious just in how they do against them. And then uh, it'll lead us to, uh, you know, you know the world championships, you know, in the next the next couple years, and how those guys compete, you know, with them. Oh, also, we uh, Bassett did did beat uh, Aiden Valencia, who's in high school as well. So it was like two high school phenoms facing off, and uh, it was a good match. It, uh, Valencia almost got a takedown uh, at the end of the match. It was so close, but he just couldn't get uh, Bo's knee down. So, I mean, like you said, eventually we're going to see this happen, I feel like. Just with the times and with all the resources the high schoolers have. We've seen it before in other countries. 
Like what? Saw the live was like seventeen, wasn't he? When he won his first Olympics, he was young. I, I can't recall. Uh, he was young though, like seventeen, eighteen. No, Snyder was nineteen. Yeah. So, you know, we could probably see it, but. I don't know, man. Um, anyways, so we're going to do a podcast next week about the Olympic trials. But, bef- you know, let's just do a, a short little preview. What do you think of some of these brackets? Man, well, uh, Willie Saylor put out just his kind of draft of uh, what the brackets will look like according to uh, John Kozak's uh, predictions for seeds. Uh, Kozak works at Flow Wrestling. And... Uh, It'll it'll be interesting to see how they how it plays out. He you know Willie thinks it'll play out the way that he put it. Man, it's just uh, they're tough, man. When you really like look at the brackets, it's just like these are nail biters, and especially the ones that have someone sitting in the finals. Like, man, seventy four, like that's crazy. Like murderers you, row. You have guys that are junior world champions. You have Jordan Burroughs in there. You got Car Sirachi in the bracket. You know, like it's it's crazy. And to you have a guy Jason Nall who's kind of like I think in the position that David Taylor, Kyle Dake were for Burroughs for a while. Like he has yet to make a team, but he's like he's like a three seed kind of. Yeah, yeah. So he's like a you know he's faced. A, you know, the best of them and just has yet to make a team, but he's, you know, we know what Jason Nolf has done on the uh, folk style uh, scene and a legend, three-time NCAA champion, but it's like, dang, like a guy like that, you would just think would make a team at some point, but then you look at who's in front of him, who's stopping him from making a team, it's Joe Burrows, Kyle Dake, and it's just like, dang, man, there's always, it's always uh, interesting when you see a guy that has all the potential and would medal for us at the world championships uh not on the team and i I would love for uh nolf to have a good show in here but then that means jb would not have a you know make the final so that's where it that's where it's like dang man all the i don't have any favorite wrestler i just like just i kind of just want exciting matchups but yeah i would definitely want to see the uh Jordan Burroughs, Carter Sirachi, just because of the, you know, the... The little, beef, little beef that happened. Yeah, so I would want to see that. And I would want to see... Uh, if I... Let me pull this up. Where, for 57... I do say, dude, I I want to see Dake win. I know, dude, I love JB. Like, legend. Best wrestler. International USA wrestler of all time, right? But I just want to see Dake beat Sitikov. I, that and and after his performance at the Olympics in 2021 and getting bronze, I just want to see him make the finals, you know. And obviously, you want to see him win gold. But I wonder, like, just let's pretend Dake and Burroughs retired; they weren't wrestling in this. Let's say Nolf made the team. I wonder how Nolf's style would go against Sitikov, because Nolf kind of just attacks nonstop. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying I'm like, oh, well, uh, Nolf would beat uh, Sudikov, whereas Burroughs and Dake can't. I'm just saying it would be an interesting style matchup. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Um, and that was the thing when Dake wrestled Sudikov last time. It's like every time Dake shot, he got to the leg and scored or almost scored. And then when he wasn't attacking, that's where Sudikov scored the point. So, like, next time Dake wrestles Sudikov. If he gets a chance, just attack nonstop. I just feel like you have to. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at these brackets, and I'll just go through, like, you know, I'll probably put these out, what Willie drew up. But, man, if we could see Soriano versus Spencer Lee, we've been waiting to see that for years since their NCAA finals, right? Uh, that would be fun. That could be a potential uh, quarterfinals. And yeah, if that if whoever wins out of that could potentially face either Richard, I think Richards, um, <coughs> Lua Dell has Desager. Uh, I think uh, Lua Dell could come out of that one. Then Richards probably will win against Lua Dell, and then it'll be a Richards versus 
either a Soriano or a Lee. But you look at the bottom side of this at the 57 kilos. Uh, Vito's sitting in the semis at the bottom side because he's a world uh, world champion. You at the bottom side you have Dayton Fix, and then you have Gilman. So they could meet in the. Uh, they would meet in the. Um, dang, they would meet in the uh, quarters. Dang, maybe I. Yes, you're right. Because Vito sits in the yeah, semis. so they wouldn't. So my bad on the uh, Spencer and Soriano. They would have met in the quarters. I guess I just got messed that up because of how it the bracket looks. But yeah, uh, Dayton and uh, Gilman to get to Vito. That'll be fun. I mean, they've battled in the past. Uh, Dayton's. You know, stopped Gilman from making a world team, and Gilman's also stopped Dayton from making a world team. So it's uh, yeah, they both stopped each other. But yeah, I, I'm the 57. All these weight classes, man. Like you have Vito coming out of nowhere the last you know year and being a world champion. Then you have Gilman being a you know Olympic uh, medalist and be you know doing what he's done from going from Iowa to Penn State. And then you got Dayton Fix, who's coming off his another runner up. And then you got Spencer Lee, who, you know, lost on his way to getting a fourth NCAA title and having all the attention on him and people curious if he was going to continue to compete because of his knees. And then you have Soriano, you know, missing last year's Olymp or last uh, Olympic trials due to COVID and and just being the mystery guy that he is. So I think there's a, and then just being 50 and then you look at like 57 and 65. We don't have them qualified yet. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, dude, oh my 57 65 74 like just brutal. Those are the most brutal. And um whenever you think like um what is it 97 with uh Jaden Cox and Snyder? Yeah. I mean that that's a tough one too, but I feel like out of all the weight classes, we're most likely gonna get to see that matchup. Yeah, I think so. Snyder too. and um and Jaden Cox. Yep. But um okay, on another topic as well, what do you think about some of the wrestlers uh that are wrestling for other countries? Like Austin Gomez, R B Y. I mean, go do it, man. Like you see how brutal like it is to make the US team and it's just, I mean, if you can do it, go do it. I have nothing against it. I mean, you got to beat the, you, the it's crazy because Puerto Rico and Mexico, they got weights qualified that we're not qualified at yet. So I get, I guess that's probably where we're feeling kind of bad, bad, but it's like, hey, Zane Richards lost to Darian Cruz. It's just, oh, that, kind, that one hurt because it's, it's like, Think about how many times Gilman has beat Cruz, right? Yeah. He's yet like five, six times in a row and on the freestyle scene. And then you have Austin Gomez. You know, last time he faced Nick Lee, he got, he got teched. And um, it was also because Gomez went upper body, and that was a big thing of that match. But this past one, you know, Gomez getting the win over Nick Lee. I mean, Gomez, and he's been – wrestling freestyle winning Fargo titles he's been legit on the wrestling that uh freestyle and Greco at a young age so I have nothing against him man I think it's good I think you like what does it matter I mean you got to beat those guys and it I mean it's crazy how we start making excuses or start making I don't yeah excuses when it when we're when it, very much sport that like go out there and do it like if you can't do it then you're not the guy then you don't deserve it but when it comes to this topic of wrestlers wrestling for different countries it's like oh it's it's the we have some it's uh yeah but like rby right he said like you don't put the money in my pocket you know and if you're an olympian for another team you get to i mean you get that's you get to say that forever you know like like, like let's say like rby is plans probably to wrestle and then go fight you know, he can say forever uh, when he's doing MMA or whatever, like, that he was an Olympian, Olympic wrestler. So, I, I don't blame him at all. It's just funny because, like, Gomez, didn't he tweet and he said, uh, he said, good luck 
Uh, ha- yeah, he said have fun. Uh, well, no- yeah. When it, uh, the Wrestling Nomad, he put out a tweet of of his project- uh, projections for the uh, seeds at 65 kilos. And um, Austin Clo- Clo- tweeted it with uh, have fun. And that's true. It's like, man, all he had to do was uh, qualify the weight for Mexico. And they just give him the spot since he, he did that. But yeah, for sure. I might open that door. It got a little hot in here. But, um, yeah, man, it's just really interesting seeing, like, I feel like Miles Amin kind of started that trend uh, oh. of guys wrestling for other countries, you know? And, I mean, look how it served him. I mean, he got an Olympic bronze because of it. Yeah, I feel like in recent years, yeah, definitely the most uh, uh, known guy, especially since he, you know, medaled at uh, – the uh, the Olympics and I think man I don't really I don't care I like I I feel like it, we got to beat those guys like I don't I I don't see it any other way than we got to beat those guys and I it's just <laughs> I don't yeah I don't you got to explain gotta, it gotta, other gotta, than that like yeah, I don't it, see people's fusses about it and but it's, it's kind of funny though that Roman is doing that and. Um, and Gilman has been a guy that's been vocal about it in the past. And they obviously tra- have trained in the past together. Definitely not probably anymore, but it's just kind of funny. I'm just like, man, I would love to just ask Thomas Gilman. So how do you feel about Roman doing what he's doing? And you in the past had stuff to say about wrestlers, you know, wrestling for different countries when they're, you know, born in the U.S.? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I do support it because you have to do what is best for you and your path. And as we've seen, I mean, dude, th- these brackets, these weights, it's a world tournament in and of itself almost, I would say, in difficulty. Just with how, I mean, 57, 74, just, just brutal. And it is... I, I, I don't know if I feel like it, it is the easy way out in a sense. I, on one side, I do get it, but on the other side, it's like, man, don't you want to wrestle for the USA? Don't you want to represent the country that you, you know, I mean, that you live in and that you were uh, born in? I, I, I just, um, I, I do, I like it. I like that they're wrestling for these other countries, but. I, I get what you're saying, too, because it's like some of these guys – wrestled for the U.S. at age level. Like, Cadet, Junior, like, Gomez and RBY, they made world teams at, as cadets. So it's like you have represented the U.S. in the past. and But now, man, it's think about it. Why not do what you need to do for your career when it's like, and maybe your country, I don't know if Mexico is giving them anything or if there's any as- incentives, but... At least for Roman, it is it's good for his brand. Like when when he gets announced, when he goes and fights someday, and he gets announced that he's an Olympian, they're not gonna talk about on air like, oh, it's easier to make the Me- uh, the Mexico team than it is the USA team, and that's why he did. No, like people would be like, what are you talking about? Like you're trying to discredit his credentials. Nobody's gonna say that on like on air that like. Oh, he went, you know, he he's he was born in America, and then uh, you know, he ended up wrestling for Mexico. I I don't think anybody in the MMA is gonna say that. We as re- wrestlers in the wrestling community will say that, but at least for Roman, it it makes sense when it's like, especially for U UFC, it's all about you know, your your name, your credentials. And Roman, ha- is gonna is an Olympian, and you can never take that away. It's like. He's like, what's I wonder for like MMA fans, what's more impressive being a multiple time NCAA champion like Bo Nickel or being an Olympian like Roman? Man, I I gotta think just on the resume, being a multiple time, I, I want to say being a multiple time NCAA champion, but if it was like you're a multiple time NCAA champion and you're an Olympian, like, like Ben Askren, like he didn't medal. Daniel Cormier didn't medal, but they were Olympians too. I don't know, but I think 
in America at least, people have realized like how useful being an NCAA champion is in wrestling. I mean, yeah, and then fighting because I, I feel like the top and bottom game of folk style, it's just so much better for MMA. Have there been just, more Olympians wrestlers in MMA than probably NCAA champions, though, when you think about it, right? Yeah. There's been a lot of NCAA All-Americans, but yeah, as far as champions, I feel like there's been more Olympians because I know you got DC, you've got uh, Ben Askren, Henry Cejudo. Um, I, I'm drawing a blank. There was a guy from Canada who's a Canadian Olympian. Anyway, go back to what you were saying Randy, right before I cut you off. Wasn't Randy Couture an Olympian? Um, for Greco, I don't know. I think he was. Um, but yeah, I think it's good for their brands. Um, yeah, and also they're gonna pick up that audience too. Like, uh, people, the Mexican crowd, they're gonna love them. You know, if they ever fight in Mexico one day. Oh yeah, they're you know they're gonna announce that they represent Mexico, so people are gonna go crazy. Um, speaking of which kind of transitioning into MMA. And we're going to spend a lot of time on MMA this wrestling offseason. You know, whatever we can, uh, updates in wrestling we can give. Obviously, we have the Olympics, but uh, we're definitely going to keep up with MMA a ton uh, this wrestling offseason. So, UFC 300 is upon us, and it's going to be massive. I mean, if you look at the prelims, and to the main card, it is stacked from top to bottom. So, in case you don't know what the first fights are. Uh, FYI, FYI on the Randy Couture, he was an Olympic alternate three times. Okay. Yep. And Greco. But I think they, they used to announce that he was an Olympian for the UFC. Oh, okay. I think, I think that was really um, helping okay. them out uh, announcing that. So, let me just read these matchups. Starting at the early prelims, okay, 6 p.m. So you'll be able to watch these for free on ESPN from the early prelims to uh, regular prelims. So 6 p.m., Cody Garbrandt, former champion, versus Davison Figueredo, former champion, at 135. So Davison Figueredo coming up a weight. Cody Garbrandt, he's back, and... Cody Garbrandt, uh, I didn't even realize that he was a wrestler at Newberry College. Yep, and uh, back in his high school days, he was a uh, Ohio State champ and a runner-up. Yeah, and NHSCA, uh, All Virginia American. Beach All-American yep. runner-up. Yeah, so that's really cool. And we were talking about it, uh, he's boys with Lance Palmer, right? Yeah, I believe so. so. Yeah, because I've seen him, you know, uh, wear Ohio State, you know, like a crew neck yeah. in the past, but I thought... He might have been like a walk on or something like that, but then diving into it, he's uh, I think he just he's got boys that uh, wrestled there, like Lance Palmer, like like I said, he's from Ohio, so makes sense. Yeah, um, Cody, man, I love Cody Garbrandt. We were talking about this earlier. He just gets into this mode where he'll just start swinging, like he lets his emotions kind of overcome him. And he has settled on that in his past two fights. And hopefully the time off gave him a chance to recover. Um, and he doesn't, <laughs> you know, just start swinging and, and banging and gets knocked out. I don't think he will. I, I, I love Cody. I think he's going to win this one. That's my pick for this. Do you have um, any opinion on that? Man, honestly, I, I'm i very much a casual when it comes to MMA unless it's like, you know, the top guys, even Garrett Brandt, I've watched him a couple of his fights and I know he's been, you know, he's been a title holder, right? And, uh, Davison, I've watched him a couple of fights, but I don't know, like, you know, how to pick them apart and knowing like what's their, what they're good at, what they're bad at to like make a pre prediction other than just like, I've watched some of their fights, but I mean, I got to root for the wrestler. I'm always going to go root for the wrestler unless I know the other guy is a, Total badass, and I might root for that guy, but I'm going to go with Cody. But yeah. I have seen him, what you said, just want to go in there and bang, so I'm kind of afraid that if he does that, it might not end pretty for him, but I don't that much. Well, well, I know, so what they try to do is, so you're like, that's the first fight of the night? 
they do that uh, that way it draws the audience in, and it's UFC 300. So, like, for instance, you've got this is the first fight. Then the last fight on the early prelims is uh, Hanato Moicano versus Jalen Turner, and there that's probably going to be, you know, a barn burner. And we're going to go through the rest of them. But Yuri Prohaska and Alexander Rochich, they – Dude, they're on the prelims. They're the last fight on the prelims, so it's right before the pay-per-view starts. So yeah. they, they do that on purpose, but it's like Yuri was just fighting for a title. You know, he had his uh, shoulder surgery and stuff, and he lost to Pereira, but it's just so crazy how some of these guys, you know, you go from being on a bunch of main cards, and now you're on the prelims. So second fight, you have two legends, Jim Miller and Bobby Green. And um, I know that you know a lot about these two guys. For uh, sure. Well, Jim Miller, I looked him up. Used to wrestle in New Jersey. Couldn't find too much about him, but he did one year at Virginia Tech, was a walk-on. So he's got some relation to wrestling. So I'm rooting for him. Have you heard what they want to do as far as announcing him? No. With Jim Miller? So he wanted Bruce Buffer to introduce him as Jim fucking Miller. Well, I guess we'll have to bleep that out, but whatever. And um, and it's on the prelims, which is on ESPN, so they can't do it. If it was on the main card, they could do it, but since it's on ESPN, they can't. So instead, what they want um, Bruce Buffer to do is go, Jim, pause, and let the crowd yell out, effing, and then Miller. So I hope they do that, but... Two legends. I think Bobby Green should win if he keeps – he doesn't keep his hands up. So that's the thing. Bobby Green's a great striker. He's fun to watch, and he, he can beat really good guys, but then also he'll just, like, drop his hands and get knocked out. Mm. But he shouldn't get knocked out by Jim Miller. If he loses to Jim Miller, I would say it'll be by submission. So... um. Yeah, and then you got Dr- Jessica Andrade, Marina Rodriguez. They're, they're two badasses. Jessica Andrade, um, always been fighting for titles. And um, Andrade, I'm tripping right now, definitely was a title holder. But she's she's lost a few fights, so I'm trying to, trying to remember uh, when specifically that was. Hold on now. And then you do have um, – there's like five wrestlers. You have five former – five or six of them on this card. So you have one, two, Yeah, three, she's four, a former uh, strawweight. Yeah, six former wrestlers on this card. But anyway. Strawweight champion. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. So then, like I said, you got Hanato Moicano and Jalen Turner. Um, Going to be a barn burner. Two savages right there. Diego Lopez, Sadiq Yusuf. I'm pretty sure Sadiq wrestled. Even if it was at like a high school level, okay. but Diego Lopez, he's a super dude. He's savage and he's growing a lot right now. Um, oh, a crazy one is Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. Kayla Harrison is scary, and this is gonna be her first fight in the UFC. You know, Holly Holmes uh, trains with uh, Izzy Martinez, Izzy style. Yeah, yeah, and Holly. Uh, she's great, always been fighting for titles, but um, she's like 41, something like that now. Mm-hmm. So, getting uh, closer to the end of her career. But yeah, Kayla Harrison's a super badass. Um, Calvin Cater, Aljo. Um, go through Aljo's wrestling background. Yeah, he's a uh, two-time All-American for Cortland. Uh, that's a Division three school, and... As you guys probably seen in the past, I mean, during COVID, he had uh, did a match with Roman Bravo Young, and that's how we got, uh, I think, the wrestling community got some eyes on him and realized that he was a wrestler, and then he went on, you know, to win the title, and we've, now we claim him, even though we should have been claim, claiming uh, Aljamain the whole time, but I think it, it's just one of those things where, like, you know, we, <laughs> if it's D2, D3, we don't. You know, it doesn't. As wrestling fans, we we just don't think of it, you know. But unless you're like a Division One All American or Division One uh, NCAA champion, then it's like okay, we're eager to see how this plays out. But 
Al Jermaine's been definitely a guy that um, I think uh, wrestling fans have enjoyed watching, especially when, you know, Cejudo and him went to battle. It was like, okay, two, two wrestlers going at it. But we knew the credentials of, you know, Al Jermaine and compared to Henry. And it was like, you know, I think Henry was even dogging on uh, Al Jermaine's uh, wrestling credentials to some extent, right? So, I yeah, mean, I'm, I'm rooting for Al Jermaine, man. Fight. Aljo, man, I'm telling you, like, Aljo, he took down RBY, too, in their match. So, I think he kind of surprised him. I don't think RBY thought he was going to be that good. That's why I think he got the takedown. But, um oh. Aljo actually, so he only ever made it to the New York State tournament. He never placed, and I think he went zero and two mm. his senior year. But I don't think he started wrestling till he was like a freshman in high school. So I, you know, he just got uh, better over time. But um, isn't it's uh, gonna be a good fight? Isn't Aljo's like jujitsu like really freaking good? That's what yeah. I've been told. Yeah, his jujitsu, the Funk Master, um, he's one of the best. I mean. Just he's a backpack. If he takes your back, he's gonna be on it the I, whole round. I knew of a guy that uh that did like crypto and ran like a crypto channel, but he was like big into MMA and he did jujitsu and I believe he wrestled it uh in high school. Uh, he wrestled in high school, but anyway, I got into contact with him and he was just a huge wrestling fan, so we'd talk wrestling and and whatnot. And yeah, he competed at the same. Uh, jiu-jitsu gym as Aljo and he was like dude's a freaking beast he's like I'm pretty decent myself and he's like this dude uh has <laughs> banged me up a time or two in uh jiu-jitsu but yeah that you know getting to hear firsthand you know other than seeing it I know I've seen him compete in some jiu-jitsu things since I have the UFC fight pass uh subscription uh but yeah I think uh rooting for Aljo here I know he's going up in weight uh, I know weight cutting has been a issue for him in the past and i think you know that was a thing for his fight against uh against um uh sean o'malley i think you know it's known weight cutting doesn't help your chin at all if especially if you're oh, no. cutting uh you know a high amount of weight so You're dehydrated it just makes it easier for you to get knocked out so yeah so hopefully you know this guy uh Aljamain is able to turn it around have a you know, be, you know, bigger and fresher and maybe very competitive the way. But as you've told me in the past, you know, age catches up with everyone. So I know he's near the 35 mark. He's 35, he, okay. man. I, I've i been on a roll with the whole 35 stuff. My thing is if you're 35 it's, and you move up a weight class and you're coming off a loss, I don't like that, man. You know, we've seen it. We've seen all of our favorite fighters, Tony Ferguson, um, freaking uh, Kamaru Usman, Volk, and that's not even them. Like, you know, uh, Usman moved up a weight, but Volk was the same. He had just come off a loss to Islam. So, man, I don't like it. And Calvin Cater is a bad, badass dude. I mean, he had a great fight with. Uh, Max Holloway. I mean, don't get me wrong. Max banged him up, but we know that Calvin Cater is super tough too. So I don't, I don't like Aljo's chances in this fight. If I'm being honest, I hate saying that too, but we'll see. That's the beauty of the sport. We'll see. Aljo is also a massive 135 pounder, so I feel like size won't be a problem for him. What was he weighing? Like 180? I think he said 170. Okay. So what do you think he's weighing now? Or what, what what was he weighing outside of camp for being up a weight? You think around the same weight? Yeah, probably. Okay. Probably around the same weight. I don't know though. He could have gone on a bulk, a little dirty bulk. Um, other than that, so we got Jiri Prohaska and Alexander Rochich. Gonna be a barn burner. Um, Rochich is a savage, but I love Yuri, bro. He is one of my favorite fighters. Um, he's very fluid and just fights freely and, you know, he does all the samurai stuff. So he's a very interesting character. He's like training out in the woods all the time, just yelling in, in the middle of a lake. So, and he did have a good fight with Pereira, but the thing that gets Yuri is he doesn't check leg kicks and sometimes like he does, obviously he moves kind of awkwardly, like unorthodox. 
and he puts his hands down, which will get you in trouble. So if Yuri would just put his hands up a little more, I would I would love to I would love to see that. So that that knocks out the prelims. Now, first fight on the UFC 300 main card, Bo Nickel versus Cody uh, Brundage. So Adolfo, let's let's talk about Bo Nickel and what's been going on with him recently. Well, Bo Nickel's uh, been in the spotlight, you know, in the wrestling community, not just because he's in MMA now, but oh, one thing quick to mention, uh, since they're boys, uh, Anthony Kassar made an announcement on Instagram that he's taking a break from MMA. So that's pretty interesting because, you know, the wave that Bo Nickel is on right now and hearing, you know, that he's got a teammate, best friend that's, you know, he, and Kassar's known for beating Gable. Everybody knows who Gable is. And, yeah, now he's stepping away for a little bit. Curious if he'll return. But, uh, anyway, with Bo Nickel, uh, yeah, he's just been in the spotlight for the wrestling community. And he's kind of got some hate, at, uh, hate because – he kind of came out the goat, JB. You know, you know, JB was doing commentary for the NCAA wrestling championships, and you know, brought up that if he was wrestling Starachi, he would go for the injured leg, and Bo Nickel just defending his guy. He's you know, Penn State guy, so is Carter. Why wouldn't he voice his opinion? And I think that's probably what it is at the end of the day. Just Bo kind of. Speaking for his guy because uh, that's what he said on his pod. You know, he's like, if it was anybody else, I probably wouldn't say anything. But it's just kind of crazy that he calls uh, JB, you know, just a, uh, you know, fake and just, uh, you know, that, that that was not showing good character and all that. And, yeah, I feel like, um, I feel like it's good. I mean, that the... The chatter because then it kind of brings MMA fans a little bit into it. And mm -hmm. MMA fans, I think they've known of JB for quite some time because of, you know, in the past he kind of had a little heat Work. with a uh, little heat with uh with Khabib, you know, Khabib. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you remember that. But then also has pointed out that uh, flirted with the idea of going MMA but has never really – you know, he's fl he's flirted with it by putting out some videos and, you know, some pictures. But it's like, man, if you're going to do it, just do it. And then, you know, the, the um, you know, it came out whenever when him and David Taylor were going back and forth. And how crazy would that be if they fought each other, especially since their history and in, in wrestling. But going back to uh, just the, the heated argument between Jordan Burroughs and Bo Nickel. I think it, it's cool because it's like you have a guy who's in the sport, MMA, Bo Nickel, that trash talking is needed, right, to build your hype, to build your brand. And that's what's kind of the nature of that, that sport. And then you have wrestling where, you know, we're always talking about how we can grow it and what, you know, personalities and what what are the best ways just to promote the sport. And I think this was good for it. I think – um I think you have a little, little um, heated argument between two people who are high level in wrestling, but I I, <laughs> I thought it was just kind of funny the the way that JB responded like shut up you punch people for a living and I think and I'm not trying to be a hater I'm just pointing it out like you think about it right like JB you know Nichols not making a team because of David Taylor. Right, so he went to MMA. Like, not saying, not trying to be a hater and sound like, oh, uh, whatever. Right, but that is the truth of it. Like, he went MMA route because he can't beat David Taylor. Yeah, but I think I think he like always wanted to do it anyways. I agree with you, but um, I mean David Taylor. I mean, one of the best ever Olympic champion. It I is mean, David Taylor though. Yeah, but like it is David Taylor. But just for like Burroughs' point of view, it's just like. Dude, you went like I'm just thinking maybe how Jordan Jordan is thinking like, dude, you went to MMA because you couldn't make a team, and it and then for Nickel it's like, hey man, your time probably has passed. You're probably not making a team again. Like I, I'm just thinking in the sense of trash talking and yeah. like drama, what each other could say, you know, to one another. But it's just kind of, it's kind of when you look at it that way. At least that's how I see it. 
like you have one guy who's still competing wrestling where wrestling hey man there's not a lot of money there's no money in it right but jb has made you know money in it he's really set the path for wrestlers to you know think about all the brands that he's worked with i've seen him work with I don't know, like some insurance company, Pampers or whatever. Athletic I, brewing. Yeah, he's worked with you know insurance. He's worked with you know, um, you know a pamper, you know Pampers uh, for babies and all that. So it's like he's definitely uh, you know Polo. He's worked with them, so he's definitely you know made the path for wrestlers to make some money. Um, you know the rudest deal is probably making him a a bunch too. So we get, you know, we give credit to JB for what he's done for the sport and whatnot. And I, I just think I, I love the, the heated argument between them because I just thought it was bringing uh, a lot of eyeballs to wrestling. And especially with Nickel being in MMA, I I think like all the MMA fans, too, were just curious uh, what this whole thing started from. Yeah, but but two, I think Bo is doing everything right. I mean, he has less than, like, five minutes in the cage. He finishes everybody, and, you know, like, he, he he talks some smack, but he's backed it up every single time. And uh, Chael Sonnen actually talked about this. He was like, he went after the untouchable. He went after Jordan Burroughs. And I, I thought it was a good decision um, because it just makes Bo seem more like, I don't know, bad, bad boyish, you know what I'm saying? Like kind of not like going against his community, but he's like, he's not afraid to say anything to anybody, you know? So I, I, I think that's helped him. And as we've seen, like just through like any time we posted anything about Bo on Facebook or Instagram, it gets so much engagement. So whether uh, Bo and Jordan Burroughs like each other, right? They probably don't, but you got a lot of MMA fans who, you know, saw that uh, with him and Jordan Burroughs. So uh, that's what that's what we like to see, just more people tuning into wrestling. Yeah, and then Jordan Burroughs was in attendance for WrestleMania, and people were like, hmm, Bo Nickel probably not liking this right now. But it's just, it's funny. Like, you come at, you know, Nickel being, you know, accomplished in wrestling, you know, three-time NCAA champion, Hodge winner, being one of the best and, do- you know, dominating the sport of wrestling. And now taking, you know, to MMA and still representing the wrestling community, right? I think, uh, but then it's like, dang, like, we, we're all cheering for that, right? Like, hey, Nickel, do your thing. You, you're you shouting out the wrestling community. He's done it plenty of times. Like, he's done it plenty of times where he's like, shout out to, you know, my wrestlers and all that. Like, I'm doing it for you guys. And, like, that's cool, man. Like, I, why, like, he knows, like, he's a wrestler. He knows what the, you know, that we don't get covered as much. But then you go and you, you you come at the the goat of wrestling. But then maybe in his mind, he's just like, like, I, I believe he respects Jordan. But then maybe in his mind, he's just like, Kale Sanderson, the goat to me. Like, yeah. That, yeah. So maybe maybe it's not even like that to him. But I thought it was good, man. And uh, speaking of just Bo Nickel in general, man, like, this dude is, uh, hey, he's fun to, fun to cheer for, man. And I, and I know... You know he's five and zero right now, and you know I listened to his recent interview uh, with ESPN, and it was like he's looking to uh, to get tested in this fight, right? But then I I just hear that, and I'm just like, dude, like, and I get it. I uh, you know, I'm starting to understand how MMA works in the sense of like you need to build up your career, right? Because it, mm-hmm. it is like, hey, it is a dangerous sport. You can you know one second you're getting you're on top of the world and then the next you're like three four you know match losing streak and if you don't strategically you know cover your cut or strategically plan your career Mm. right like for instance like richie lewis getting to talk to him and kind of learning how he's making his own path and they're not going to take anything you know that's going to push him back or take take away all that he's put into the sport like he's he wants to not only be champion but he wants to get his money and you don't want to rush yourself just, you know, and then then what? Then you're screwed and you're not getting, you know, the money that you believe that you deserve because you rushed your career. So I understand in the sense that, like, hey, you got to compete against people who are maybe not the best and maybe not really going to 
really be any adversity to Bo Nickel. But it's just, I that's the one thing I do hate about, like, the MMA. It's just that, oh, it takes for, But it's like any other sport where it's like co- this com- combat, right? Like, you get your first couple fights or whatever that are kind of against bad competition just to... And to get used to the to the game of it, right? Like mm-hmm. Bo Nickel still has only been training MMA for I don't know how long, but not two years, maybe now. So it makes sense, it's like okay, feed him these type of guys. But I just I don't know if it's just the maybe re- like because wrestling, like you know, when you're facing bad competition, okay, you know, like all right, that's that it, it is what it is, right? But when he's beat guys. Miles Martin, he's being uh, Colin Moore, being like, you know that like he's faced the best of the best, and you know that like, man, I just want to see him face some really good competition. But then you understand the game of MMA, right? That it's not like that. You can't just throw him to the wolves because it's like if you do that, then we won't see him one day be champion. Because then it, it just it stops his career from getting to that point. But that's my whole rant. Yeah, no, you you have to build yourself in MMA. Yeah, like, bro. I've seen promoters, like, even on the regional scene, like, a guy will have his first fight, and they throw him someone that's, like, 3-0 and or something. And I hate saying that, but your first few fights, like, okay, if you're, like, yes, you're a competitor, you want to, you know, fight a tough guy, okay, cool. But you need to get experience first. And I just think that, and a lot of people do that in the amateur scene, but if you're the type of guy Maybe you do one or two amateur fights, then you go pro. Or maybe some guys don't even do amateur fights. Just go straight to pro. You have to build yourself. Maybe you fight a guy who's older. Maybe you fight someone who has a losing record. Like, I hate to say it, but you have to do that. Because when you're perfect, you can lose an amateur. You know? Like, you could be a guy who's 5-5 five and five amateur. Maybe you lost your first three, and then, you know, you win a couple in a row, and you lose one, whatever. But, but you get better, right? But in pro, you can't. You can't, you can lose some, but you can't lose like three in a row, win one, lose two in a row, win one, lose three in a row. Like you can't, that just kills your career. You have to win. So I think it's smart. I think it's smart they did. Look at Khabib, by the way, one of the goats. I Khabib's great. His first like 13 fights were against dudes who were like two and eight, five and Five, or you know what I'm saying like he didn't face guys with great records it, and his dad knew that his dad did that strategically and then by the time he had destroyed all these guys and came to the UFC he was ready and, and, and destroyed people so I think it's smart and by the way Cody Brundage is not a pushover uh, he's got a lot of power uh, he was a college wrestler as well I think he wrestled Newberry too right mm-hmm so two time NCAA qualifier, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, doesn't have the um, uh, accolades that Bo has, but MMA is different, you know, uh, the distance is different, the way you enter in on takedowns is different, and Cody Brundage has a lot of power. You don't want to get hit by him, a, a clean shot. So that being said, Bo is really long. I don't think he'll have a problem getting to the legs if he needs to go for a takedown, but. Don't sleep on Cody Brundage or uh, to be a pushover. I think we might see Bo face a little adversity at least in this fight. How wh- how do you predict this fight going? I think Bo's going to take him down, and submit him. Um, I think Bo wants to keep almost like that aura of invincibility. He could be getting tempted to stand because uh, a lot of wrestlers like they start striking and they fall in love with it, so then they kind of forget to mix in their wrestling with it. I don't think Bo's going to do that, but I could see him wanting to prove himself more on his feet. But he kind of did that in his last fight. So, honestly, man, if I were him, I would use my superior wrestling and try to get an early submission. That's what I would do. So, I've got Bo first round finish. But you never know, man. You never know. Like I said, Cody Brundage, he's he's not a pushover. So, Um, So you don't think he'll – Bo want to engage too much in the hands. Like, he will, but I think he will. But you don't think that's like his way method to win? He one. could. He's long. That's the thing about Bo, man. It's not like he's an amazing wrestler who's short and stocky or something. He's he's got length, which is really bad. Because then guys to hit him, they have to 
get in on him. You know, they can't they can't move in with a jab. That's stupid. Like you have to move your head to close distance on a guy that is tall and lankier. So before you throw your strikes. So he has to get close to Bo to hit him. And if he gets close to Bo, he can get clipped or Bo can clinch him, take him down. Yeah. It's not great. And wrestling guys like that in general who are like Bo, people can say what they want, but wrestling a tall, lanky, and strong guy is never fun. So, anyways, other than that, we've got um, Charles Oliveira and uh, Armin Saryukian. Saryukian, you know, judo guy, wrestler, jiu-jitsu, all that. He's great. I think Charles is going to win. He's He dyed his hair blonde. He's got the Super Saiyan thing going on again. Everyone knows blonde Charles is uh, hard to beat. I got Charles winning that fight. And then, uh, okay, another wrestler, Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway, and the BMF title. One thing that's cool about UFC 300 is they're finally letting people wear their own custom shorts. I, I think, thought that was cool. I think they're only doing it for this event, though. But pe- Max has been begging for the Hawaiian print shorts for a long time. So he's finally got them. They're sick. You got to go check them out. I think you can buy them on UFC's website. But they're blue, red, and white. Looking forward to, to that fight. Justin never uses wrestling, but he was a, a D1 All-American at, um, Northern, at Col- Northern Colorado. Uh, he was more of a defensive wrestler, you know, uh, counterattack. Front headlock, uh, crush youth his hip, spin behind. But he did defend Jordan Burroughs' double leg before. That's his, like, claim to fame there. Um, I Unfortunately, I do, for Max, yeah, you got to love Max Holloway. He's great. I do have Justin winning just because Justin is, like, probably one of the scariest people you could fight in the UFC. Everyone, like, if you know you have to fight Justin, you're like, oh, God, it's going to be a war, win or lose. Same with, like, Alex Pereira. Um, but Justin, I think I think the power, I think the leg kicks. Max doesn't really check the leg kicks. I, I'm going to have Justin winning that fight. Um, after that, you've got the uh, the women's fight. You got Jan, uh, sorry if I mispronounce these names, uh, Jan uh, Zhao Onan, Jonan, and then uh, Zhang Wei Li. Obviously, uh, Jean, former women's champion, uh, Savage, she's got the belt now as well. So she, I, I have Jean winning that fight. Uh, put your money, I would put my money on her. And finally, we got Jamal Hill and Alex Pereira, which Jamal Hill is coming back from an injury, blew his Achilles, ruptured it, um, had surgery and stuff. He's been out and. Alex has been fighting and knocking people out, and it's just terrifying. So this is for the light heavyweight title. Alex, again, he came up from middleweight. Now he's the 205 champ. I think um, I, th- I think Alex is going to get it done. I love Jamal Hill, and he's so hard to strike with. He's, he's very um, kind of unorthodox. In a way, he's very orthodox, but he, the way that his fight IQ is, he just is great at shot placement. I could see him beating Alex Pereira, but coming off an injury like that, you just don't know if it's rushed or not. So, either way, gonna be wild. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Uh, well, I've watched just Pereira against Izzy, so I don't know too much about his game again. And then Jamal. He'll, I've, no, I, I'll be honest. I've never seen him fight. Yeah, man, he's he's savage. I mean, he really, he's very technical. He's a very technical fighter. He has a lot of reach. He's tall, so I think he he'll give uh, Alex problems with that. With his, I mean, they're around the same height and size. But you never know. Alex just has crazy power. I mean, he can put people out one shot. I mean, we've seen him do it time and time again. So, all right. Well, in your opinion, uh, what do you rate this card? Just from how it oh. ended up being made. 
10 out of 10. Um, I do think that there could be like one or two more really big fights. Obviously, people want to see Connor fight on it, but I guess he wasn't ready or I, I don't know, man. I, I want to see McGregor and Chandler fight. Uh, you gotta feel bad, by the way, for Michael Chandler because, you know, he was already 36, I think, after he beat Tony, and now he's been waiting for a year and a half. So, dude, he might be 38 or about to turn 38. Mm. So, uh, Chandler's one of those outliers, though, where I feel like time won't catch up to him till he's about 40, just because you have guys like him, Yoel Romero, uh, that you, they just have that freakish build and and good chins. I think. Their shelf life is a little bit longer, but outliers. Um, hope to see that fight coming soon. Yeah, he's uh, 37. His birthday is April 24th, so that's coming up around the corner. So he'll be uh, 38 here soon. Yeah, they should. I think they're fighting. I think they're going to try to fight this summer, though. Yeah, I know. There's been you know there's been teasers throughout like you know in the past, but I think it's getting serious. I think uh, I think people are like uh, Dana. Dana's coming close to announcing it. I think they're going to announce it during UFC 300. That would be the perfect time, wouldn't it, huh? They need to do it, though, at the beginning, because if they do that right before the main card, I feel like that will take away some of the shine from UFC 300, like those fighters. And they've done it before. I think it was like Nate was fighting somebody. I can't remember. Nate uh, Diaz. And then they showed a promo for Connor versus someone else. And Nate got pissed, and he, like, got up and left the press conference. So, oh. I don't know when the best time is for them to do that. I guess for this uh, media or press conference, whatever, they're, they're having all the fighters there. Oh, yeah, yeah. They do that. They always do that for the really big cards. So, okay. Yeah, the, like, massive pressers. I mean, the last time I can really think of one that was, like, really massive – was when Connor and uh, Eddie Alvarez were. Do you remember that one? That's like probably yeah, the most yeah, legendary. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder if. <laughs> when I wonder if anybody will come at Bro Nickel. I mean, who who from all that, from all those guys are really out like out there in the talk? Like just probably Bo, and then um, who am I thinking of? Um, who else is really maybe Kayla Harrison will say something. Um, dude, I don't think anyone to talk smack to Bo. You know, I mean, so Izzy's 34, 35, and I do think he he's like, he got a few fights left, he's going to retire, but by the time Bo is up there for a chance at the title, the guys that will be at the top, him, Kamzat, and uh, Shavkat, Ramon, uh, Rachmanov. So it'll be like, you know, the wrestler archetype. Back in there, so... Last thing about Bo, do you think, uh... How do you feel about him being where he is on the card? I think it's good. I, I um... You know, they're trying to build Bo, and just with his background and with the way he's been finishing guys, I think it's a good placement. You need someone that's young and up-and-coming to, to put on that card. So, I think it's good. Is it better? Will it be a better fight than like Yuri Prohaska versus Alexander Rochich? No. But I think it's a good placement. Did were people complaining about his placement on the court? Um, not from what I saw, but I just kinda just wanted your input on it and just curious, especially since I mean Bo has who has he really fought to beat in the I, I just know that this card is legendary. It's UFC three hundred, so I'm just like could he have been on just prelims, like the maybe the last of the prelims? I don't know. No, I'm just saying, I'm just... no, yeah, yeah. I think he's in a good spot for okay. sure. But, yeah, I mean, we had a lot to talk about. It's been a sec since we've done a full podcast, but got a lot of stuff coming. Yeah. Spartan Nationals and um, just, you know, Olympic uh, trials. Obviously, we're going to meet up and do a podcast on that next week, but we're going to have a busy off season, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm excited, man. Just Olympic trials, freestyle, and then cover maybe more wrestlers in MMA and um, just kind of get in the hang of it. I know we kind of were a little delayed in the season just, you know, getting everything started. But Figuring everything yeah, out. Yeah, but we'll be okay. So I'm excited for UFC 300. We're probably going to meet up and watch it together. And then 
after the weekend come back here and do a pod on uh Olympic trials, which is exciting. Like kind of go over going over it a little bit in the beginning. It's just there's so much you got to really dive into it. I don't know if we'll oh. just do weight class by weight class and just do that, or we we'll do a whole pod because I feel like it could take a good amount of time to cover each weight class just because it's Olympic trials. Who's it's gonna so come tough. up? It, it's yeah. I feel like we're going to be surprised. You remember years ago when we were surprised when Frank Molinero, you know, won the whole thing? I just – I would love for us to be surprised again. But then it's – it's, you know, I go back to saying we don't have 57 and 65 qualified yet, so. Did, did uh, Molinero – he beat Pico, didn't he? Yep, he beat Pico in the final. Damn. Bro. And after that, Pico went straight to MMA. Yeah, man. He, he kind of had a hard time at first for Bellator. Yeah, he did. And, he uh, had all the skills, but I guess, like he had even said before, like, I knew how to box, I knew how to wrestle, but putting it all together and, like, fighting, like, he was still learning. But I'm like, dude, you were, like, 20, 21, you know? And he's someone that I think could have built it up a little bit more because they tried to throw him, like, all right, he won, like, two fights, and then it was, like, a uh, contender, title contender fight. What is he right now in the – oh, well, I guess now it's combined, right, PFL. He just won – he won his uh, fight against a guy I think he lost to in the PFL. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I, I definitely see him being a champion in the PFL, so. And then Bryce Meredith also won his recent fight on the PFL by unanimous decision. Yeah, he's like 6-0 and now. Yep. Yeah, he's doing great. Man, so I'm excited. I'm excited for – I'm excited for the guys that, like, you know, just Bryce Meredith. Archie Colgan, you know, they're not getting the shine like Bo Nickel or anything, but, you know, I think they're going to win it. I'm, I'm higher on uh, Archie, though, Colgan. I don't know why. I just I feel like he's uh, seen a little bit more out of him in his yeah, fights. For these other promotions, I feel like, to compete with the UFC, they have to get those types of guys in title fights and winning. You know, I mean, like PFL, like they got Jake Paul, who I guess at some point in time, maybe he's going to do a fight with them, an MMA fight. And then you got guys like we said, Aaron Pico, Bryce Meredith, Archie Colgan. You just got to get them into those title fights. So, yeah, for sure. Well, I think that concludes this episode of the Wrestlers Grind podcast, uh, covering a little bit of the last chance qualifier and UFC 300. So, Rooting for the wrestlers that will be competing on the card. Uh, hopefully, they all get dubs. Um, but, well, I guess one of them, who's facing each other that's wrestler versus wrestler? is uh, It's Bo and Cody Brundage. Okay. So. One guaranteed. Yeah, basically. one one yeah. definitely guaranteed. But, yeah, tune in, and then we appreciate you guys, as always, and embrace the grind. Yes, sir. Embrace the grind.